So today is very, very important to me. Um, it's the topic of the day. And the reason it is, is I'm going to read a scripture here from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Paul the Apostle says, that day will not come except the apostasy comes first. Now, what's the apostasy? I'm reading this out of the Amplified because they explain it. Unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. And so that is something that was prophesied back in the days of Paul. And Lisa, <clears throat> today... But wait, wait, you know, I, I can hear people right now listening, saying, wait a minute, isn't once saved, always saved? So what does that mean? Can can somebody profess and then regress to a place where they're no longer a Christian? I think the bigger question is, that's because that's an excellent question, yes, uh-huh. the bigger question becomes, were they even saved in the first place? I Jesus is invisible. You can make Jesus however you want, and you can make salvation however you want if you take selected scriptures out of the New Testament. However, if you look at the overall counsel of the New Testament, salvation is made very, very clear. Now, we have got statistically, and this one shook me up, this is the whole reason for the Awe of God tour. Okay. And in, from 2000, the year 2000, till the present day, over 23 million people have gone from practicing Christians to non-practicing Christians. Oh, excuse me, to non-Christians, not non-practicing, non-Christians. Okay. So they are either atheists, agnostics, or spiritualists, or absolutely nothing, which I guess would be agnostic, correct? Uh, or atheists, yeah. Or atheists. Mm-hmm. So now, the thing I want to say right up top is, first of all, Paul never wrote that they would never come back. So you're saying that there could be a falling away and then there could be a return. Yes. Okay. And if That's I look news. at John the Baptist, he went in the spirit and power of Elijah, and he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I think there's going to be an Elijah anointing coming forth, and I believe it's going to be a multitude. It's not going to be one guy. I think it's going to be sons and daughters, and I think it's going to start with the sons and daughters. I think it's going to start with the Gen Zs and millennials. I love that. And there's going to be men servants and maid servants, so we, we get to be included, Lisa. And they're they're going to go in the spirit and power of Elijah because if you look at Malachi, he said, I'm going to send you this, the spirit of Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, Jesus clearly made clear that John was Elijah to come, but he said there, Elijah is coming in the future tense, and John was already beheaded. That's Matthew 17, okay? I'm, I'm thinking about the Youth of Flame days. I am, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. there we go. I, I did a whole series on that. Yes. And so I believe these people are going to be sent to the lost sheep of the church, not the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the church. Okay. Don't get me wrong. God's going after the lost sheep of the house of Israel too. But I really believe what created this falling away is we never truly preached healthy, and I can't emphasize enough, healthy repentance. Now, when people hear the word repentance, they think of a mean-spirited guy who doesn't love people. He's he's in the ministry. He doesn't have anything else to do. He's been in the ministry for 30 years, and he wants to control his people's behavior. That's not repentance. Okay. Repentance, I always look at it as a man and a woman getting married. So Paul the Apostle makes this statement, a man's going to leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife. The two are going to become one. He said, but this is actually an illustration of the way the church and Jesus are one. If you look at Jesus, he's the groom, we're the bride. When you and I got engaged, you had to make a decision. When every groom proposes to a a bride, she has to make a decision. What's her decision? Am I going to break up with 3.9 billion guys? Now, of course, no. She's probably not dating. She's not dating 3.9, but she's... Is this the one I'm going to set my heart on? Is this the one I'm going to give my whole heart, soul, and life to? And... When we just do a formula sinner's prayer, hey, we, we, we preach the goodness of God, which we need to do because the goodness of God leads sure. someone to repentance. When we just preach the goodness of God and just say, hey, you want God? Pray this prayer. We've never said to that person, you got to make a decision like that, that bride does, the girl that's been proposed to. I'm going to break up with all my idols. Now, what's an idol? An idol is anything we put before God. It's anything that Jesus died for. We say goodbye to because... He gave his life for me. I'm going to now give my life to him. Wait, and can I do clarity on that? Because Absolutely. Jesus didn't die for food, but Jesus died for us to have food in the right place. So I would say an idol is something that we have put in the wrong place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Because there are people that can have something good. Yes. 
in the wrong place. Right. That, so I just wanted to say that idols can be good things with misplaced value attached to it or, they or can be too sin. much value or they can be sin. Right. Absolutely. So if we don't preach repentance, and if you look at Hebrews 6, repentance is the first foundation of our relationship with God. It said, let's not lay again the elementary teachings of Christ, laying the foundation of repentance from dead works, then it's faith towards God. So there's really not true faith until we say, okay, I'm all yours. And this is what Jesus says in every gospel. The only way you can follow me is to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. So basically, if we offer salvation mm -hmm. to people by praying a prayer, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of all my sins. Amen. Now I've brought Jesus into my life, quote Jesus, with all my other sins and idols that I put before him. So now what happens is I have developed a really a, not a real relationship with him. So now that fake Jesus doesn't change my nature. I'm still eating So you're saying up with there's sin. no discipleship. There's no follow up, up where somebody says, hey, you've made a confession of Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life. And now this is what that looks like. This means that you say goodbye to this, you say no to this, you say yes to this, you have a community that is discipling. You're saying, we've just kind of said, hey, where are you going to go when you die? Hell or heaven? You don't want to go to hell? Just say right. this prayer and I'm not really discipled anymore. I'm actually going to a deeper level. Okay. There's been no transformation. Okay. So the, 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 the greatest blessing of the new birth is our old man dies. Our, our old spirit dies. And a brand new person created in the exact image and likeness of Jesus is, re is born. Mm -hmm. Now we are in communion with God, whereas before we were alienated from the life of God. You said we're actually enemies. Yeah, yes. yeah, but we were alienated. Absolutely. So right. now I don't have that changed spirit. So I remember my mom looked at me and she was furious that I got saved because I was raised Catholic. But she had to look at me un unprovoked. And she said, you've changed. And I remember saying to her, I never forget it. I, I know exactly in the house where it was. It was in West Virginia where I graduated from high school. And I'd come back from college and I said, mom, you have to understand, this is not me doing it. God gave me a brand new heart and he changed me. That's why I'm not as selfish as I was before. Because my mom used to weep because of how selfish I was, right? And so there was a change. I submit that when people pray just a formula sinner's prayer without repentance, without saying goodbye, okay, I don't believe there's a genuine change just by saying, Jesus, I receive you as my savior. I believe there has to be a, 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 an a absolute repentance of heart saying, okay, I'm putting you first. I'm putting you as the Lord of my life, supreme in authority, not just savior.